This week, we've seen Keir Starmer pitch the Labour Party to the right of the Conservatives on the economy. Rishi Sunak said he would increase corporation tax, whilst Labour opposes it on the grounds that it's bad for the economy during a crisis. Is this an economic necessity? No. Corporation tax is a tax on its profits, and it won't impact the economy negatively. Companies such as Amazon have made huge sums of money off the back of COVID, so it's right that they, and companies like them, are taxed fairly. Some are calling this, including Dinosaur Alan Johnson and, surprisingly, Paul Mason, austerity. Really? The case for increasing taxes on big business has always been a strong one, apart from the moral case of rebalancing the economy towards ordinary working people. Let's talk about the facts. The idea that increasing taxes during a pandemic will impact growth is a myth. Currently, we have the lowest corporation tax in the G7. A moderate increase proposed by the Labour Party in the last manifesto was to increase it back to levels in 2010, which is still one of the lowest in Europe. Currently, we are £2 trillion in debt, and that's a big number, meaning our debt is at 100% of GDP. Huge. But after the Second World War, we were at 250% of GDP. What do we do? Well, we increased taxes and spent an unprecedented scale. The Attlee government created the NHS, the welfare state, good jobs, and a huge infrastructure programme. By 1973, the debt to GDP fell to 45% creating a better society and improving the economy at the same time. Increasing taxes on corporate profits isn't austerity, it's redistribution, and that is one of the most fundamental values of the Labour Party. As well as Labour using the austerity excuse, the second reason is that they would impact growth. That's bullshit. Let's look at other countries in the G7. France is 28%, Germany 30 Italy 24 Japan 30 the US 21 this leaves us at the bottom of 19%. I think you'll struggle to find an argument that increasing corporation tax will stunt growth when most of the countries in the G7 have high GDP and high productivity. Now, what do the voters think? Well, most of the public support an increase in corporation tax. Obviously, this includes Labour voters, but also an overwhelming majority of Tory voters too. So who exactly is Keir Starmer trying to convince here? It is just bad politics. Let's talk a little bit about the 2021 budget. Rishi Sunak announced yesterday that corporation tax will rise from 19% to 25% in 2023. Starmer has praised this move since the increase will most likely happen outside the pandemic. So after all of the mess Labour have put themselves into, it turns out that both parties agree. Vindication for Keir Starmer, right? Wrong. Consider the political capital. Before the budget, the big news was that Labour opposed corporation tax increases and the Tories supported it. Regardless of the budget, the story here is that Labour, the party of fairness, opposed a just and popular policy. They were also outmaneuvered by the Conservatives. Labour's line of economic competence and them being the proper party of business seems to fail when you have the same policy on both sides. Had Labour supported the tax rise immediately, well, they could have attacked the Conservatives on fairness pointing to multinational corporations making a killing whilst others have suffered so much during the pandemic. Big own goal for Starmer there. Labour seems desperate in wanting to fight old battles. They haven't realised that Jeremy Corbyn, John McDonnell have massively changed the narrative on this. Much of the 2021 budget was actually stolen from McDonald's economic thinking and the last two manifestos of the Labour Party. Labour want to do a reset and go back to trying to convince the voters that they are economically competent by showing restraint a complete misunderstanding of where the public are at. After 10 years of austerity, people want an increase in spending. There's a reason why Sunak is so popular. The fact that the government were willing to intervene on a massive scale due to COVID, specifically the furlough scheme. People don't think Sunak is a hero because he shows economic competence or restraint. The only explanation I can think about this is that they despise Jeremy Corbyn and the direction the Labour Party took in the last five years so much that they're willing to support incredibly unpopular policies in order to break away from the left. Another interesting development, a tweet from Jason Groves, who is the political editor of the Daily Mail. Ooh. Um, he says, Shadow Chancellor Annalise Dodds suggests Labour will back the four-year freeze on income tax thresholds, which will push 1.3 million low-paid workers into the tax system, saying, in principle... We are not against the freeze. Essentially, Labour won't oppose increasing tax thresholds in line with inflation, meaning 
effectively a tax on low income workers. So how does that work? Well, let's say the cost of living goes up to 3%, wage rises by 1% and a tax bracket doesn't shift. That's a squeeze on workers. A massive opportunity for the Labour front bench to attack the government. This old new Labour isn't very politically savvy. Astonishing, isn't it? Labour was so quick to halt any tax rises on corporate profits, but have no issue raising taxes on nurses. As Aaron Bastani mockingly says, is this the new Keynesian now? What is the point in the Labour Party? Are they trying to lose? The local elections aren't far off and they're in an incredibly weak position and seem to be making all of the wrong choices. Right now, the Labour Party are crashing and burning and, well, they fully deserve it. Disagree? Why don't you drop a comment and tell me why? Give this video a like, share this with your mates and dare I say, your family and let's get a real discussion going. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe to Turn Left for more independent voices.